Hello, welcome back to the Synth EV tutorial series. We've dealt with the main synth itself and the keyboard sequencer. So now we're going to get on to look at the advanced features and we get to them through this button up here. And today we're looking at the top tab, the functions page. So this is the, uh, the master on off switch for the entire suite of controls inside. So we need the whole thing turned on. And then inside the functions page, we've got five different um, slots that we can configure individually. So each one of these five slots is basically an advanced envelope generator. So it extends, it's completely independent of actually the, the envelope shape, or I shouldn't say extends, totally unique functionality. So each one of these um, envelope pages uh, gives us access to a 16-step envelope and we generate nodes inside this thing by simply left-clicking anywhere we want and we can right-click on any one of these nodes to delete them. So as I say we can create 16 of these steps. Each step has uh, a midway point with this little up and down arrow symbol that will appear and that will allow you to pick that um, little arrow up and change the shape however you want. It's, notice it's also bipolar. The first and last points we can't do anything with, they're fixed at zero, but we can pick any of these nodes up and drag them around anywhere we want. You can see as I drag it to the right it won't go past the next node. Before we get into talking a little bit more about those nodes, let's just plumb some functionality in and hear it doing some stuff. So I'm going to map this crazy looking envelope to, so let's send it to the oscillator. We've currently got oscillator one. Uh, the sawtooth of oscillator one is going to be our kind of primary sound source for, for the moment. So let's pick uh, oscillator one's frequency. I'm going to then plug the, uh, the filter output. Oscillator one's going into the filter, out of the filter, into our output. So now the, the amount that this envelope modulation uh, is currently applying is zero. So as soon as I start increasing this value here to anything other than zero, you're going you're gonna to hear this pitch shape be applied to uh, oscillator one's frequency and modulate the, the frequency. And I'm going to right click drag because as you'll hear very soon, the changes are pretty extreme. So at just 1%, we can already hear uh, that pitch modulation applying. I'll, I'll left click now and make it a bit bigger and you'll see what I mean very quickly. It's very quiet at the moment, so I'll just turn it up a little bit. So now that we've had a very quick demo of what it can do, let's drill into a little bit more of the detail. Each one of these nodes has the parameters uh, below assigned to the current selected node. So each time I choose a new node along this graph, you'll see the point uh, position change. This is point number five, four, three, two, one. So the first point is always point one. And here we've got point six. And this is its current level, minus 0.586. If I pick this thing up, you'll see the level amount change. Pretty straightforward stuff. You can also see it moving along in quantized steps. There's a grid uh, behind that allows us to, to move in these kind of jumping functions. But you can see I'm going from, from one quantized value to the next. But if I right click on the time value that this point currently corresponds to and move up then you can see me moving in fractional steps so we have very very fine tuned control over exactly where these i should i should should have called them points from the outset really but uh, you know nodes on the on the envelope 
You can also see the little marker that's uh, running around. Uh, as soon as it gets to the end, it restarts again. That's because we're currently in loop mode. If I turn loop mode off, then that little ball disappears. Now we're only actually going to get triggers when we hit a key. So now because I've reintroduced the keyboard uh, into the discussion, I can no longer come directly out of the filter. I'm going to go uh, from the filter into the envelope and out of the envelope to our output. So that gives me access to my keyboard. So I press that key and the function envelope shape started uh, started its journey from left to right immediately. But once I let go of the key, see it carried on. So if we had, uh, let's say, a very long envelope in the background, it's going to carry on doing its thing until it gets right to the end of the envelope. Now, because we're in key trigger mode here, every time I press a new key on the keyboard, it's going to refire this function. And so we'll get the interaction between these two different envelope engines, the envelope shaper and the function page. Let's bring the envelope shaper down a little bit. So we've got more decay, but less kind of static hold now. Now you hear it, the envelope shaper fading the sound away while the function envelope is still doing its thing in the background. So these are just control modulations. Don't forget, whenever you're a little bit confused about the interaction between any modules in any kind of synthesizer like this, modular or semi-modular, just try to think of them as control modulations. This thing here is applying a control voltage modulation to its destination, which happens to be oscillator one frequency. So it's doing that. Meanwhile, other modules in the synthesizer are perfectly free to do their thing as well. And it's the sum total of all of these effects that we ultimately hear. Now we've got this really complex shape that we drew, that we drew by kind of clicking all of these um, points in the in the graph, but I can reset that whenever I want by going to any of these presets. So if I click on the sine wave preset, then that's what we get. And now we get the sine wave shape, then hold it down. And we'll hear the whole thing. And then once I let go of the key, the envelope shape as decay phase kicks in and the sound fades away. Now we've got this new shape, I can select a point and again, edit them either via the text at the bottom of the, the window or just pick up the point and move it wherever I want. The total length of this function is currently um, synced to the host door and it's operating at one bar. So I'll put it back in loop mode to get this generating nice and easily. And I'll take the envelope back out of the equation, just send the filter directly to the output. Change the total length. That's going to increase the speed. Turn tempo sync off. And now we're in a fixed amount of time. That's currently spending 3.06 seconds to draw the entire envelope. Speed it up. Pretty obvious. Have a look at some of these other shapes. We we're kind of into FM territory where we, were, where we were going really, really fast then, where it's no longer possible to identify the frequency modulation, the pitch modulation, and you start getting a completely different kind of audio effect. So this is really dramatic because we're at 14% at the moment. Let's pull that right down. We go negative. It basically literally just inverts the control uh, voltage modulations. Try not to get too upset with things being um, bipolar. Okay, so that's applying uh, to uh, modulation to oscillators uh, frequency. Let's turn that off back to our static wave. Let's send output number two somewhere else. I'll just um, shut this down for the moment so that I can talk over the top of that horrible drone. 
wherever I click in this box is going to determine what we see. If I click outside, anywhere outside of the name, we'll just see the envelope. But if I click inside the name itself, it's immediately going to ask us, oh, where do you want to send this thing to? And so I can now pick, let's say, filter frequency. And as soon as I've selected something, it takes us back to the window. So try to get into the habit. I tend to click just below the power symbols. I try to kind of make myself remember to click it just underneath the power symbols if you want to see the envelope, because it's really easy to kind of click on here and you think, oh, I don't, I want to see the envelope go away. But just uh, bear in mind, there's that little quirk of the interface. So now we're going to do some editing of the filter frequency. And now by increasing the amount, control voltage modulation amount, now you can see filter being applied. Let's uh, keep going. We'll map the third function to uh, frequency response. Eventually, it'll start self oscillating if we push this frequency response far enough. There we go. Speed it up a bit. So each of these function pages can operate at different speeds. So now the, the, frequent, the filter response is cycling at a one bar speed. Let's make it one and a half seconds but the frequency we can make nice and slow so those two things are operating completely independently okay now let's get a little bit of a, a noise effect going on function number four so I'll map noise direct to the output and then assign the noise level via this control. So I've got this crazy preset shape. This is currently set to tempo sync, but it sounds kind of cool, so I'll leave it. pretty much it the, the functions page is actually really simple it's quite easy when you see when you see these things for the first time and you see all the kind of potentially overwhelming options available to you to to just kind of run away thinking it's much more difficult than it actually is it really isn't it's just a set of envelopes to which we can assign uh, any of these different destinations in the synth and we've just got five of them to play with. So as you heard, then I'll bring the oscillator frequency modulation back in as well. And we're just hearing four different um, sound effects basically being sent, or modulation effects being sent to different destinations in the synthesizer. But obviously you're only limited by your imagination on stuff like this. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, advanced joystick options next. If you hit subscribe and notifications, you'll be sure not to miss the video. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.